Okay, let's say this one. Yeah, like that. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, and finally. Hello, what's up? Today's video, I'm going to share with you guys how I use the MIDI Fighter 3D and some mouse buttons and gamepad to help me work faster in Figma. Let's look at mouse first. I'm using a Logitech MX Master, the first generation. Still using it pretty good. But there are six programmable buttons and I used uh, four of them. Uh, this one I set it, set it as search so I can just easily search let's say plugin make blog super useful and another one I really like is page up and page down so I can just use the button to page down page up page down down up 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 down yeah and this the horizontal scroll the thumb scroll i set it to switch tabs look up there so i can switch between tabs yeah okay so besides mx master i think some gaming mouse have the potential to be a great let's say figma mouse so, so this mouse uh this I believe is uh, Razer Naga something, MMO, and this is Logitech G600. They have 12 buttons. That sounds crazy, but if you like map it accordingly, uh, logically, it, it might work. If I have that mouse, I will like map it this way. Let's say this is the page up and down, and pairs, the pairs, pairs, and previous tab, next tab switch between prototype and design these two and these are like organizational stuff and this is selecting stuff i'll get into it that in a little bit so point is if you if you map it uh logically then you can remember it it's not that crazy that's the mouse now let's look at the midi fighter 3d Let's look at MIDI Fighter 3D, how I set this up. So, general layout is the first row here, used to navigate and view stuff. And these two are copy and paste style. I make a frame on group, and this pair is make and break component. I mean detach. Don't break it, so detach. Um, this is tidy up and this is center organizational and this is selection within a frame you can press this to view outlines to easily tell vector image and then still show you what's outside the frame that's been clipped so this is switch between design and prototype design and prototype I like this a lot next up we have copy style and paste the style let's say copy this style and paste to power style copy paste copy paste copy paste and finally my stone all right so let's say you want to add a horizontal scroll to this this thing and then let we can make a frame and then we can just like this make a frame and then you can clip it and horizontal scroll something like that so make a frame or you can just ungroup it to undo the frame you just made ungroup and an another scenario is for example you have this and then you can ungroup it and they become individual frames that you can do stuff with make and detach component so let's say this is a button I make it a component 
and then you can start duplicating so these are all um, this is component and detach a component by the way one thing really useful about online view is you can see what is not a component and what is a component these organizational buttons so let's say I want to align these three to the center Just use this um, lay them up like this first and then tidy up I want them to be a little bit closer Okay, now make a frame and center it to the frame there we go nice okay this one this one is interesting yeah this is an interesting idea to nav to select a uh, component within a frame uh, okay pause this video and go try this in Figma if you haven't it's a little like not so straightforward however we can make this group into a arrow key format we can just use this to go into a level, go down a frame, go up a frame, down, 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 up, 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 and go into another frame, select this, select them. Yeah, pretty funny. Yeah, so this is very useful in some cases. For example, if I want to change these icons to this one, so which means I have to select this and this um, so I can hold on control and click to select the deepest layer within this this icon and then I go up a level I go up a level I mean select their parents and parents and then I select this icon and I want to switch it to this one circle down there we go so pretty useful i want to select these buttons aluminum and go up now i selected the button this one yeah what we just saw was the first layer this layer now let's go to the second layer which is paste all and select all uh, copy all and paste all basically select all and copy select all and paste let's say i want these information to be on this receipt normally i would do all select copy select all and paste select all copy select all and paste it's not terribly slow but it's too many there are too many steps so if i use media fighter i can uh, copy paste copy and paste copy and paste copy paste copy paste copy paste copy and paste so this is essentially how i set up my midi uh midi fighter 3d to use as a macro pad all right so how do you set this up you can use all kinds of MIDI devices, such as a launch pad or a MIDI drum pad or a MIDI keyboard. And you use this piece of software on Windows. And I will link a tutorial of how to use MIDI key to key, how to set it up. But the idea is when you linked your device and then you can know, OK, I want to program, for example, this button and it is this one 8257f you just double click and let's say i want this to be last plugin wrong last plug in I'll help if i can actually spell yeah okay last plugin uh, last plugin so that is control alt p so now we just save that save okay let's see if it works let's run a content reel okay content reel close and let's press this yeah run last plugin so auto flow close this plus yeah auto flow nice 
So this is how you set up your MIDI device. So that's on Windows. You can just use MIDI key to key. And if you're on Mac, I heard MIDI shortcut is pretty good. And you can just search it on YouTube. And another free option is use MIDI loop and uh, MIDI stroke. Uh, I tried it on my Mac. It did not work for me, but it might work for you. Okay, now let's look at a gamepad. Oh, let me actually turn it on. Okay, so I, in my daily work, I don't actually use it. But if you have one lying around, give it a try. This is how I set it up. So this one page up and down. This one is sent stuff from sent to back, bring it to front, sent to back, sent to bring it to front. Navigate frame with this joystick. So next, next. Okay, and this is zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom to like the canvas and zoom to the selection and then let's go next okay go into the frame which we just looked at okay let's say this one yeah like that and zoom to fit what's left okay navigate canvas yeah something like that So the idea is the same, just convert uh, game pad, game controller input into keyboard stroke. For that, I used a piece of software called Antimicro, and I will link uh, a tutorial of this piece of software. So when you press on the controller, it, it becomes blue and you can program it. For example, this page up, you just click on that, bring brings up a keyboard is just page up okay so this trigger I'm gonna press this and this is our trigger so let's play let's press no key and then advanced assignments so click on that uh, what's this this is sent to back so that is control click on the on that and shift and then send to back it should be left bracket yes left to square bracket and close 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 and then send to back send to front send to back send to front awesome so this is how you use a game controller to control figma Yeah, so this is it. This is how I used these devices to help me work faster in Figma. Another thing you can do to speed up your workflow is to learn all the keyboard shortcuts of Figma. Yes, all of them. So you can go to this question mark keyboard shortcuts and then go through all of them. Try them one by one. Please check out this file I made for Figma community. So it's called Figma Shortcut Playbook. Figma Shortcut Playbook. I'll put a link in the description. And in the file, I prepared some examples you can play with. For example, this is very fun. Once you learn these, you can just play with it right here. So let's say you can just control the typography with your keyboard. This is uh, size line height or weight and letter spacing yeah so pretty cool hey there are more to come so go there give it a try yeah that's it and thanks for watching and i see you in the next video